you send me out in the cold October night. Get me sick. And now I actually have to talk about you. You piece of shit. Not to worry. I'm sure you'll soon master the magic. Play Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, the video game, and visit masterthemagic.com. Well, I guess that today is the 17th anniversary of the film's release. Gives me an opportunity to talk about a medium I've never talked about before, video games. I've hinted at it before, but Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire for Xbox sucks. But before we get to that, let's briefly discuss the ones that came before that I have experience with. One of the earliest examples of a Harry Potter game I remember playing was Sorcerer's Stone for the original PlayStation. I never beat it, I don't even think I got halfway through, and unfortunately my PlayStation 1 doesn't work anymore, and I have nothing else to play it on at the moment. But I did play it a lot as a kid, enough that the terrible graphics still show up in my nightmares. There was also this one for the Game Boy Color, which I barely played at all, I just want to show you my Game Boy Color, that was partially burned because I accidentally fell into the trash, and when I went out to burn, because remember, we can do that in my parents' town, I saw it after lighting the fire and just barely managed to save it. Still works. The ones I have the most experience with are the first two games for PC. I played these a ton and were the first games I think I actually beat. The first has its problems, like that everyone is a ventriloquist, but it was fun and the second was even better. I loved this game. It was challenging but not too hard, it had a cool open world setting that made me want to explore, some fun puzzles and some really good atmosphere and graphics. Oh, this also includes a Quidditch game that I played sometimes. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to play these games in years due to the fact that I don't have a gaming PC, but the second I get one, I am playing these again. A few years ago, at a flea market, I bought the third game for the original Xbox, and it's pretty good. I've heard some say it was too easy, but honestly, I thought it was pretty hard for a kid's game. Some of the controls were just ridiculous. I will never understand how they thought controlling the Patronus was a good idea. So yeah, the games had a pretty consistent quality. So what the hell happened here? I fucking hate this game, and it shouldn't have been that hard to make a game based off Goblet of Fire. You had the Triwizard Tournament, the stuff in the graveyard, and the movie took out a lot of stuff that you can put in for us fans of the books. I got this game over a decade ago for Christmas, and every time I replay it, I keep hoping it'll be better, but it never is. Hey goddamn, I want to talk about it. I'm only talking about the Xbox version, I have no idea if the GameCube, PC, or PS2 versions are different. Time to talk about what I say is the worst licensed Harry Potter thing ever released. This is Goblet of Fire for Xbox. Alright, so you get a choice to play as one of the main trio. You can play up to three players, but I don't have friends. Alright, so it starts out with you at the Credits World Cup with the Death Eaters attacking, and we have to get to the port key. It's basically a training round, and the first enemies are these things called Dugbogs, which are a thing in this universe. Without teaching you how to do anything, you just sort of have to read the manual first, I guess. Eventually, you learn Wingardium Leviosa. It's Leviosa. Oh, shut up. Carpe Retractum, which pulls things, and the A button, which murders things. Seriously, there is no strategy for defeating these Dugbogs, just keep hitting the A button until they're dead. Eventually, you do get to fight a Death Eater. How are we going to get past that Death Eater? We can't cast at him! Why? His back is to you. Just Petrificus Totalis him and he's down for the count. No, instead just pull a log so he can fall down a cliff and die. By the way, don't forget to get some Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Beans that the Doug Bogs just shit out after you kill them, because you can use those to buy things like more stanima and making your Jinxes more powerful. Don't worry though, you won't need them. After you reach the port key, it's off to Hogwarts. Our first, and like the movie only class, is Defense Against the Dark Arts. Do we learn about the unforgivable curses? No, that would mean we would actually be attempting to adapt. It's another training round and we even learn a new spell, Asio, which brings things to you. Shouldn't that be a charms lesson? Then of course Harry is selected as the fourth champion, meaning we need to learn more spells. Cool, since you're teaching us other courses stuff anyway, how about how to transform a dragon into a rabbit or something? Or how to shoot water. I'm sure that'll come in handy during the task in the fucking lake. Anyway, here's some salamanders on fire and you have to put them out, kill them, and then put out the host fire or else they can reignite. Oh, did I mention they can breathe fire? Huh, I guess he is teaching us how to beat the dragon. 
goodness sake, extinguish that fire. Motherfucker, you sent three 14-year-olds into a fight with a bunch of fire lizards. I think we're doing pretty well. Yeah, I know he's the bad guy, but he could give a little more encouragement. And this is all to get a Triwizard Shield. And that, my friends, is what you will be doing for 90% of the game. I'm not kidding, this is what you do for a majority of the game. Collect shields. You can either get one big one or ten mini ones, and you need those to unlock the next levels. Sometimes you may only need three, sometimes you'll need eleven. So you may be thinking, oh, you get to go around Hogwarts finding shields like a scavenger hunt or something? Nope, you got four locations. The Hogwarts exterior, or more appropriately, the roof, the Forbidden Forest, the Prefect's bathroom, and by that I mean the sewers, and the Herbology greenhouse. You get to play those four levels over and over and over again, until you eventually find enough shields. And the entire time, you just keep fighting the same enemies over and over and over. From more dug bogs to these stupid bugs that sting you and I, I hate them, I hate them so much. You do come across a few blast ended scroots, giant bug monsters that fart fire from the books that weren't in the movies, so that's cool. You know, as a kid, I was upset that Hogwarts wasn't real, but I'm kind of glad now as an adult because if these things existed, I'd say just nuke the entire planet. There's no strategy to fighting most of these things, just keep hitting the A button until they explode. It doesn't even make sense why some of these creatures are in these levels. Why are there tree creatures in the sewers? Sometimes there's a little bit where you actually have to plan stuff out, like using these exploding cauldrons to destroy things, which is one of the more fun parts. Although, are these kids not going to get in trouble for destroying school property? And you also use these plants that shoot out poison to destroy poisonous mushrooms. A neat idea, you have to use Carpe retract him on them, but aiming them is really hard. I grew to hate playing these levels. All of them. Even if they start out kind of fun, you'll be bored after five minutes. And then you'll have to play it again and again and again. I had everything I wanted to say about these levels and then saw I still had eight shields to go. Alright, so that's the stuff you have to do to get to them. Now let's talk about the Triwizard tasks. First up, the dragon. Like a lot of flying levels, the controls are reversed, so up is down and down is up. I can handle that. What I can't handle is the fact that you're pretty much locked into a single trajectory. You don't have free reign, you have to follow the path, but the big problem is you can't stop, and you move too damn fast. It's even worse when you fly through these stupid blue rings, which I guess unlocks the Firebolt's turbo feature. I wouldn't recommend it, you'll run into things. Rather, it be trees, the castle, the dragon's fire. This bitch doesn't fuck around, she'll keep spitting fire at you. You know, this only just dawned on me right now, but this dragon's whole thing is that she's supposed to protect this egg, and yet she chases Harry all throughout the grounds and leaves the egg alone, surrounded by thousands of people. Mother of the Year! You're judged by how well you do, either getting a bronze, silver, or gold. I've tried and tried and tried, and I've never gotten more than a bronze. So it's playable, but very underwhelming. As for the second task, the Black Lake. Same sort of deal, just a lot slower. You swim in the fixed pathway it wants you to, shooting jinxes at Grindelows that don't really attack like they do in the movie, they just shoot ink at you. Not much else to say about this one. It's only slightly more fun than the version on the DVD. Although I will say, it has one of the most abrupt endings. Seriously, you don't even free the hostages. The game does that for you, and then it's over. the first person to say this, but my god, being a spectator to these tasks must be so boring. Now onto the maze. For those who read the book, remember how much stuff was in that, like Bogarts, a giant sphinx, the mist that turns you upside down, and then how disappointing it was in the movie when it just sort of tries to eat them? Well, be prepared for even more disappointment. First, you have to find where to go, you know, given that it's a maze. The only enemy are these roots popping out of the ground, then you get a running level, which is a little cool. Then you have to save Cedric by defeating two blast ended scroots, which you have a little patience will take like a minute. Then you get the cup. All in all, it took me like 10 minutes and most of that was just because I had to do a lot of backtracking in the first part. Well, that's a Triwizard task, but still one more thing. We must go up 
against he who but does not be named himself. All right, first thing you gotta do is jinx a bunch of skeletons. Then Voldemort shoots Avada Kedavra, Harry shoots Sperliamus, and you create that one connecting thing that the movies fetishized. Priori incantatum. And you use that to destroy even more skeletons and a statue. This part could be fun, except the control is so confusing that I genuinely think this would be easier to do in real life. Then after that, we get a cutscene of Harry getting the cup, transported back, and then it ends. This game is so boring that I started playing it in July and didn't finish till September, late September. Not because it's hard or challenging or anything like that, or even really that long. No, no, no. I could probably beat this in about five hours, but it's just so boring that I want to do other things. So that's the gameplay. It's boring, repetitive, uncreative, and without much challenge. But how's the production value? The control is not very good, it's slippery, I'm constantly running into shit, spellcasting feels very delayed, and the camera is... confusing. Graphically, the game is passable, for the time. Although the cutscene graphics can be a little awkward. Also, these skeletons look like Halloween decorations. However, overall, the graphics are fine, but it's such a dark and gloomy game to look at. The only level with any color is the greenhouses. The voice acting's a mixed bag. Wormtail sounds awful. Kill the spam! No! The Cadavra! <laughs> Did he pass a kidney stone while saying that? That said, the three actors they got to play the main trio are freaking great. Until making this, I swore they just got Dan, Rupert, and Emma to reprise their roles. But no, it's actually voice actors and they're perfect. Although their dialogue is pretty repetitive, and their constant screaming got a bit obnoxious. But this game actually did get one actor from the movies to be in this. And it's Ralph Fiennes as Voldemort. Yes, they couldn't get the main trio, but they could get Academy Award nominee Ralph Fiennes for the video game. That is actually pretty awesome. The music is good, and I can at least play it. So from a production standpoint, it's competent. Story-wise, it's shit. This is an abridged version of the movie, which is already a pretty abridged version of the book. Most of the story progression is told in these still images, and what little story they do have is stupid. Example, to make figuring out the egg clue more exciting, they drop it in the sewers. Watch how that happens. Whoa! Oops! Sorry, Harry. Everyone who complained about Ron in the movies, including myself, owes Steve Cloves an apology. I'm sorry, Mr. Cloves. Let's keep going. We might find a way down to it. Asio Egg. Well, that was easy. There is so much stuff missing from the book and movie that there's no emotional connection to it. Most of the established characters aren't in it. We don't see Ginny, Neville, Seamus, Fred and George, Snape, Malfoy, McGonagall, or even the new characters introduced in this one, like Cho, Kargaroff, Maxine, and Barty Crouch. It never teaches us about the unforgivable curses, there's nothing about the Yule Ball, and so little time with Cedric that when he dies and it ends with Dumbledore giving a speech praising him, I don't give a shit. But you know one thing this movie forgets about that is legit important to the story of the game itself? Who put Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire? We never find that out. In the book and movie, we see it was Barty Crouch Jr. who disguised himself as Mad-Eye. But here, we don't see that reveal. Why did this seem so rushed? I get that they only had about a year, but the second game had a year, and that turned out great. I I'm sure the people who made it tried their hardest, but this game is awful. Every time I replay it, I keep hoping it'll get better, but it doesn't. Thankfully, that would be the worst game in the Harry Potter franchise. Well, the other games had their problems, None of them would ever come as close to as bad as this. No, no, we're not doing this. Screw it. We're done. I'm too tired. Mischief managed.